Our lead researcher is Sarah Ashcroft, who works as a research technician in 520 ASI. I basically do what you guys all did, bioassays on honeybees. I use a bunch of different pesticides. Um, and basically I've been doing that with summer bees, so now I'm moving, we're moving into the winter bees, so now you guys were the first group to, to start to do this Asela Nova and the winter bees, so I'm interested to see your guys' results. Mary Ann's and her husband are working on a research uh, study in apple orchards with honeybees. So I'm basically using the formulations that they would spray on apple orchards and seeing what they do with bees in a bioassay. So it's kind of related to that experiment where we're taking a bunch of different doses and seeing how bees react and finding out the LD50, which is the lethal dose at which 50% of the population dies. A guy at my church used to work in this department and he brought me in and introduced me to Jim and Jim said, oh, we have a job opening and I recently graduated from college in environmental conservation and I never worked in a lab and I never worked with honeybees or any kind of insect. so. I basically just learned what I learned from starting this job. I never took a class in insects. I never really was interested in uh, managing honeybees, but um, I've learned, and I guess I have, I have a chemistry background, so that, that part of it was helpful, but um, I never really knew much about honeybees, and now I really like them, and I'm gonna get a couple of highs for next summer. Uh, me and Marianne just wrote up a proposal to do a, another experiment with honeybees. Um, uh, looking at health, healthy colonies and weak colonies, so um, we just submitted that yesterday. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about that to see if it gets funded. It's exciting. But um, I'm working here until at least next August, which hopefully I'll be enrolled in a master's program somewhere. Mm -hmm. We wanted to know whether there was significant bee mortality when they were subjected to low doses of pesticides. We also wanted to find out if there was evidence that combining the fungicide with the insecticide produced higher mortality rates. We were the second of three groups investigating this question. So our group administered the second lowest dose of pesticides for the bees. So we wanted to know whether a small concentration of pesticide was enough to answer the study's overarching question. The honeybee is currently experiencing difficulty in population, and it is an important insect worldwide for economic reasons. Honeybees produce honey, pollen, royal jelly, propolis, and wax. They are also important to our society for pollinating a large number of crops in the United States necessary for high quality production. Without honeybees, these fruits and honey would not be available to us on a daily basis. Some key science concepts and content knowledge that we used from class included our knowledge of the honeybees chewing and sucking mouthparts, and that was how they obtained their treatment. We also learned a lot about conducting a fair test. Our control in this experiment was the sucrose, and our other variable was the different kinds of treatment, the assail, the nova, and both. In addition, we paid special attention to keeping all other factors constant, such as having 10 bees in every single cage. Before putting the bees in the incubator, we controlled for the humidity with a paper towel inside the shoebox we kept the cages in. Also included in the shoebox was a thermometer to watch the temperature. Not keeping the bees too close was another important aspect of keeping our results consistent. In the experiment as a whole, the, vari the variable manipulated was the amount of toxicity in the solutions. More specifically, in our honeybee experiment, the variable that was being manipulated were the different solutions given to the honeybees. This gave us a chance to see the effects that different solutions, such as pesticide and fungicide, had when they were given alone or together. Additionally, this allowed us to see what solution gave the biggest impact on honeybee mortality. The responding variable in our experiment was the amount of mortality for each cage with the different solutions. We measured this by counting the amount dead and moribund at the beginning of our experiment, at the end of 24 hours, and then at the end of the experiment at 48 hours. Our controls were the two cages just given sucrose with 10 honeybees in them. This allowed us to see the natural rate at which honeybees died and allowed us to compare it with the other solution cages. 
We built in repeated trials by having multiple cages with the same solution. There were eight cages total, two for each solution, sucrose, pesticide, fungicide, and then both. This allowed us to see the variation, if any, among the same solution. There are many strengths and limitations to, to the design of this experiment. One of the strengths of the design was keeping the bees constant. The bees all came from the same colony, were taken out at the same time, and kept at the same temperature and light exposure. Another strength of this experiment was being able to see the results directly. Since the bees were put in cages by solution, we were able to directly look at the differences between cages. Some limitations to the experiment were that the bees were not in their natural environment. The bees might have reacted differently if placed in a more natural environment rather than a laboratory setting. We collected data on three days. On November 18th at 8.30 a.m., we set up eight cages and put the 10 bees inside each cage. We measured the amount of sugar solution we gave to each cage in advance, then observed the results after they began to feed on the solution. 24 hours later, we checked to see how many bees had survived and how much solution had been consumed, then added new tubes of solution for the remaining bees. On the final morning, we collected the same data and documented how many bees had survived the experiment. We charted each cage separately. The numbers indicate how many bees were either dead or dying at the end of the first day and repeated this data for the, on our second sheet for the second day. From left to right, we listed the control cages, which had no pesticide, then the insecticide data, then the fungicide data, and finally the data where the cages uh, of both solutions were combined. While the weight of the treatment in the test tube was very important to our data collection, I believe that the number of deaths over the 48 hours was the most important data we collected in terms of comprehending our experiment's final. The data is represented on three data sheets, one at zero hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours since the treatment was applied. We counted the number of honeybees moribund in each of the 10 cages at the beginning, 24 hours after we applied treatment, and 48 hours after. We typed this data into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and calculated the average mortality for each treatment and standard deviation at the three points in time. Lastly, we calculated an overall variation for the four different treatments. By looking at the different p-values, we were better able to see if there was any statistical significance to our data. The p-values are highlighted in yellow. To be statistically significant, the p-value must be greater than 0.05. Looking at the p-value of the control, the sucrose, and the solution that had both, we found this to be the only p-value that turned out to be statistically significant. This further proves our hypothesis of the solution of both the assail and NOVA to be 